Don't worry, buddy. We'll get you all fixed up. Mr. Daninator. Dr. Hackenslash. Dr. Hackenslash, thank you so much for seeing us on such short notice. Oh, anything for such a uh, repeat customer. I mean, for the health and well-being of my uh, special patient. Uh, so, uh, what brings uh, you two in today? The Failblazer's real sick, Doc. He's not running on all cylinders. Oh, well, I, I find that I don't fire on all cylinders if I don't uh, get my morning uh, toaster pastry and a uh, cup of java. <laughs> uh, just a little uh, curbside humor. Well, I hope you can find out what's wrong with them. Uh, yeah, sure thing. Okay, uh, Mr. Failblazer, I'm going to have you turn your wheels and uh, cough for me. Oh, good heavens! What's wrong? My sincere apologies. I, my, I'm normally cognizant of this situation. Uh, I just polished off a full bowl of Rocky Road ice cream and my hands must be freezing. It won't happen again. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Project Failblazer series. At the end of the episode 7 I mentioned that the Failblazer was going to need new spark plugs. And since failure is always an option with this vehicle, when I pulled one of the coils off of the spark plug, obviously there was a significant amount of oil down in the spark plug cavity. So discovering that gem of information, I knew I was in for a valve cover gasket, an intake gasket, and I figured I'd swap the coils over and the throttle body from the parts blazer since they looked like they were still pretty new. I plan on doing all of this when I got time in my schedule. What I didn't plan for was the Failblazer totally disregarding my schedule and breaking down on me with a pretty severe cylinder misfire, rendering the Failblazer completely undrivable. Look what you did, you little jerk! The misfire was so bad that the check engine light was blinking. Houston, we have a problem. I had my suspicions as to what could be the cause of the cylinder misfire, but it turns out I was wrong. You'll see what I'm talking about in the video. So, having said all of that, me wanting to just change the dang spark plugs in my Failblazer turned into a week's worth of repairs and a two-part video project. <sighs> well, as my YouTube pal Three Wheels on a Block said, The Chevy Trailblazer. Blazing a trail of never-ending repairs. That one's for you, Daninator. Well said, my friend. Well said. All right, what I'm going to do first is take the air box off. These are 13 millimeter bolts. There are three screws that hold the air box in. One right here, one right up here at the top next to the washer fluid. And then there's one kind of sneaky down in here. All right, then there's a clamp. I need to get a screwdriver. Then there's an electrical connection right here. That just all unsnaps. The rest of the stuff can stay. Now I've got two 10 millimeter bolts I need to remove. There's another clamp on the throttle body. You need to loosen that. There's a vacuum line on this side of the intake. That goes to the fuel pressure regulator. You've got the PCV system. That's got to be unplugged from the valve cover. And then that just slides off. It was at this point he realized his truck was really messed up. All right, so that liquid that came out smelled like fuel. So my fuel pressure regulator is bad. The diaphragm in there must be bad because fuel is getting into the air intake box. So my initial thought for this breakdown was perhaps a bad coil, and it could have been, but with the fuel in the air intake like this, it seems likely that it flooded a cylinder and fouled the plug. So now that I have a fuel pressure regulator to replace, I'm gonna have to disconnect the fuel lines. So I wanna get all the pressure out of the fuel line system, and I'm gonna do that by cracking into the fuse panel, pulling fuel pump relay number 41, which is this dude right here. There may not be any fuel pressure because of a bad fuel pressure regulator, but it's better to be safe than sorry. We're gonna crank the engine over, let the engine consume whatever fuel may be in the fuel lines. That way I don't get squirted in the eye with gas whenever I take the fuel line off. And that should do it. I'm gonna loosen this nut that holds the air conditioning line in place. I need this to be able to move up and out of the way. It's a 10 millimeter bolt down here at the bottom. 
I get this 10 millimeter bolt out for the other side of this air conditioner line. Now we can just slide the brace off the bolt threads and then this moves up out of the way enough that we'll get this valve cover out. All right, now I'm gonna remove the serpentine belt so I can get the alternator off. Get my socket wrench plugged into the serpentine tensioner. I'm gonna put this box end wrench on the end, give myself some extra leverage. Just pulled the belt off of the alternator. All right, now I'm gonna disconnect the negative battery cable. There is a 15 millimeter bolt right here and directly across from it underneath this brace, there's another one. And then there's a 15 millimeter behind this AC line down underneath here. I got the top two out with my 15 millimeter ratchet and I've got the bottom one out with my box in 15 millimeter. Okay, so I've got the three bolts loose for the uh, alternator. So we'll go ahead and pull those. One, two, Get the one that's down low. There's a pose that's right in front of that bolt. It really makes it difficult to get the bolt out or loose. Okay. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this bracket off. I've already undone the air conditioner. These are two 15 millimeter bolts on the front part of this face. And then there's a, another 15 millimeter bolt right underneath here. And then there's basically this bolt right here and then these two right here. So I moved the boot off of the terminal. It's a 10 millimeter bolt, I've got it loosened. And so I'm just gonna take the nut off of it. So there are the two bolts at the top, the electrical connection and the terminal and then that lower bolt. All right, now I'm ready to go after this control module. I'm gonna get this off of the intake so I can access all the bolts that hold the intake into place. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all of the wiring harness that runs over the top of the engine. So I'm gonna get all those unplugged, unplug this and move it all back and out of the way. There are three seven millimeter bolts holding these packs in. There's two 10 millimeter bolts and then two 10 millimeter nuts down on the bottom. So I'm gonna remove all these bolts and get this off of the intake. All right, I just spent the last 10 minutes or so going through and just disconnecting all the little clips and uh, the wiring harnesses, pigtails, and everything that I could find that go across the top of this valve cover. Unplugged all the coils, unplugged this and this. Got three pigtails here on this end that need to be unplugged. So this wiring harness pretty much is ready to come up and out of the way. I gotta undo this one yet off the throttle body. The intake bolts are all tucked down underneath this, so they're, they're pretty tricky to get to. I'll give you an idea where the bolts are. This is the first bolt for the intake. See, that's where the alternator was. That's why I had to remove the alternator. So the one that's right up against the firewall back in there is gonna be a real pain. I'm gonna need to get a universal joint for my socket to be able to get that one out. There's a hose right here. That's gonna have to come off into this nipple on this intake. There's a bolt right behind it. There's a bolt there, one there, one there, one down there. So it goes one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, I think. So got about eight or eight or 10 bolts to get out. All right, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds this bracket in place. Underneath this plate, right in here is a 10 millimeter bolt. Just got that one out and I'm able to kind of shift this. Our fuel lines are connected to it. Seems like I need to get this out of the way so I can access the bolt better for the intake. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to take this all the way off or if this being loose is gonna help, we'll see. All right, so far I've just have three bolts loosened for the intake.
so I've got all the bolts out for the intake. I'm just going to push this little tab down. And that comes off. Right, there's one more vacuum line. Here goes nothing. All right, looks like my intake is hitting my fuel line. I took my screwdriver and just popped off this clip. Now I've got a line, quick disconnect tool. Put on this, try to get this fuel line off. All right, I use my quick disconnect line tool to disconnect the two gas lines right there. So I'm gonna just shove those off to the side and pray that this intake. Yep. And sneak past here okay here's what i did on top of the intake is the sensor held in by this clip i just pried these tabs in pop the top off of it and then work this out of the top doing that it gives me a little bit more leverage so i was able to pop that off and there's our intake all right take a closer look at this intake you can see there's one bolt two bolts one bolt got to move this hose off this nipple, turn it to the side, and there's your other bolts underneath there. So one, two, another one, another two, and then this is the one that's a royal pain in the rear end. You gotta get that universal joint on that side because the firewall's right here. This intake is pretty gross. Quite a bit of oil and sludge buildup in there. Got 100 and, I don't know, 80,000 miles on it, and uh, yeah, it's just crusty. So I'll be replacing the gasket on this thing. I'll clean it all up clean off the manifold and uh, we'll install that after we change the valve cover gasket all right let me show the reason why i'm going after this valve cover gasket a while back i went to just check the plugs 10 millimeter bolt here it holds this coil all right check this out it's full of oil so a valve cover gasket is leaking so i'm going to pull all these coils and we're going to pull up the valve cover Yep, full of oil, full of oil, not too bad, full of oil, full of oil. Oh, it's just a crying shame. All right, now I'm gonna go after the valve cover. Gotta remove all these 10 millimeter bolts. Forgot about the one in the back. All right, here we go. All right, now I'm gonna go through and suck out the oil out of the spark plug cavities. Pulled the first two plugs. Got the third plug here. Pretty grimy. And there's not a whole lot left of these plugs. This is actually not as bad as the first two. There wasn't even a, a point on it at all in the first two. There's a lot of crud buildup where the gasket sits. It's no wonder this thing was leaking as bad as it was. So I'm gonna have to maybe get a little scraper or something and try to scrape the, the sludge and the crust that is just built up on the surfaces. So that's my next task. Just going to go ahead and just scrape down the, the surfaces of this head to be able to accept the new valve cover gasket. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. Be sure to stay tuned for the next episode of Project Failblazer, where we'll be cleaning up the valve cover and intake, replacing the gaskets, and reinstalling them back onto the motor. We'll also be swapping over the coils and throttle body from the parts blazer and installing a new fuel pressure regulator. Will we get the Failblazer back on the road? Stay tuned to find out. As always, thanks for watching, God bless, and be sure to hit that like switch on your way out. See you next time.
Dr. Hackerslash, thank you so much for... Ch you messed that up. I did. Thanks for seeing us on such... So <laughs> Dr. Hackerslash, thank you so much for seeing us on such... <laughs> I'm just going to try this again. Thanks, Dr. Hackett Slash, for. Thanks, Dr. Hackett Slash, for taking. What's my line? Huh? What's my line? See me on such. Short notice. Okay. Short notice. Alright, here we go. Dr. Hackett Slash, thank you so much for seeing us on such short notice. Why are you doing this so many times? Because sometimes I don't. The Failblazer's real sick, Doc. He's not running on all cylinders. I hope you can fix him. That was better. That was better. Oh, well, uh, sure. Uh, anything for my... Repeat customer. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, uh, anytime. Uh... Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Failblazer. I'm going to have you uh, turn your wheels and honk. Or, hang on. Mess that up. Turn your wheels and cough, okay? Okay, Mr. Fail Blazer, I'm gonna have you turn your wheels and uh, honk. Cough! Yep, I messed up. Okay, Mr. Uh, Fail Blazer, I'm going to uh, have you turn your wheels and cough for me. Okay, good job. I'm gonna do it one more time. That was really loud. <laughs> Woo! That's right in my ear. You ready? Okay, uh, Mr. Fail Blazer, I'm going to have you turn your wheels and uh, cough for me. Oh, good heavens! Want me to try that one more time? I just polished off a full bowl of Rocky Road ice cream and my hands must be freezing. It won't happen again. Okay. That's actually very funny.